Welcome once again to Kane's Wrath with Tournament Rift being the map and Durr as the orange GDI on the left side of Tournament Rift and as the green GDI we do have green zero so green green zero always a nice combination to see makes it my makes my job a little bit easier green zero and Durr most likely oh yes going for that barracks then watchtower and they will be getting out a couple of rifleman scouts getting a couple of you know rifleman squads for scouts and then getting that single engineer is not too uncommon at all Actually, it's more common than it is uncommon. And actually, getting quite a few extra rifleman squads, it does look like Durr is going to be going for two engineers to capture his two of the four spikes. And usually, players will either go, when they're going for kind of the more aggressive, they will go for three engineers so that they can grab all three of these spikes, grab the two bottom spikes, and then, of course, their spike, get themselves 30 credits a second. $30 a second does add up in the long run. But both of these players sending out scouts. Green Zero going to be moving in with that two rifleman scouting group, which is, of course, not never a bad choice. Also garrisoning this rifleman squad, which will mean that, uh, you know, if Durr isn't paying attention and he sends, you know, an engineer down to capture it, he will get taken down if he's just, you know, not microing his engineer. But Durr going to be selling off a watchtower to get a rifleman squad and barely going to be able to take out Green Zero's rifleman squad. And now he's going to be moving in. He's going to see that refinery, that harvester, that war factory is what I want to say. That uh, refinery into war factory, but he will not see what happens next as Green Zero is going to take that rifle and squad down. And actually, depending on where this building gets placed, it may. He, so he may have seen that second ref go down. You actually, actually cannot see that. Okay, so actually might be able to barely see that. It is hard to tell sometimes because. The replay system doesn't always update the fog of war for each player, but we do have three and two, and uh, kind of an interesting war factory placement. Most players face it the other way, just so that their harvesters get to the Tiberium that much quicker, but it does benefit your other units for most of the game, and Green Zero are going to be expanding to the bottom, and actually not expanding, I guess Durr is just going to be re redeploying, possibly just to throw down an extra power plant so that he doesn't lose that production. That, uh, production capabilities while he moves his MCB so he can still produce units at full capacity and actually two engineers I thought he was going to be loading up one of these engineers and deploying on the far side of the spike so that he can get the spike without being harassed by green zero but it does look like he is going to be moving out with these APCs and actually green zero did he see that it's hard to tell All right. okay so it's hard to tell if green zero was actually able to see that engineer waiting and getting into that APC, but if he does, then he's going to know, hey, something is up, something is happening, although he does have the two refineries and the four harvesters now, which is pretty standard for this stage of the game. Green Zero actually a little bit ahead because he didn't spend money on APCs. He should know that there's something fishy going on just because of the APCs. There's something, you know, not super macro happening, and he's like, hey, there's an APC heading out, so... You know, you always have to be wary of those engineers, and we do have going to be six and two, which isn't quite the perfect ratio, but it's pretty close, as that is about what you want for your Tiberium harvesting, and actually, I guess, inside of that APC. Oh, here's the engineer over here, so it did get out, and the other APC is going to be up here, and Durr is going to be grabbing this one Tiberium spike. I'm assuming you can deploy on the other side of that Tiberium spike. Yep, just like that. Durr going to be grabbing that and then sending his APC to the absolute farthest side of the map and going to be heading in right afterwards. And the Green Zero actually already throwing down at this refinery, at this expansion, getting two and one. But now here comes the APC and will he be able to grab anything from Green Zero? Green Zero can probably, has probably noticed that this is happening. Yes, selling off that refinery. He's like, oh, this is not good. There's only one reason why you see a... APC like that was able to snipe the engineer and get the cash back from that refinery which is always nice to have and he's doing quite a bit of damage down here was able to actually not take down any of those harvesters so we just lost some pit bulls or pit bulls to the predator tanks and the rifleman squads but throwing down that airfield that command post not going to be getting that AP ammo quite yet in the airfield yes only for orcas hmm yes orcas yes but we need to note three Tiberium spikes for Durr, which means he is rocking 20 extra credits a second over Green Zero, which of course is uh, 
1200 credits a minute more than green zero not counting the extra is there actually an engineer in here no so it's just a little bit of a scare unless that engineer might have gotten sniped somewhere but this APC is just going to be out scouting around getting Blink Kit taken out by the Orcas. But that means Green Zero has revealed, hey, I've got Orcas. And he also is like, hey, I've got Mass Pit Bulls. And these Pit Bulls will be able to take out this APC Engineer combo. And the Engineer does, in fact, get hurled into the air there. Not going to be able to evacuate. And these Harvesters are actually quite vulnerable as all of the Rocket Troopers are down here. But there's a couple of Rocket Troopers up here. And this Watchtower is doing absolutely no good because the power is up. But selling off a couple of buildings to get those pit bulls and actually he is able to take one down as those rocket troopers do massive amounts of damage but this harvester will go down green zero needs to pull out so that he doesn't lose, lose too many of these pit bulls and actually was that worth it considering he lost like seven of those pit bulls and he's only got one left and actually he's going to lose this one as well he was able to take out a harvester full of tiberium and another harvester overall so in the economy green zero is doing okay it doesn't matter that he's you know not sitting too good on these tiberium spikes he's still got a head he's still ahead in the economy even losing another one to those three orcas which these orcas if he gets that hard points upgrade that is in fact nine bombs for his orcas which uh most buildings do take that eight yes i am learning a thing or two from green zero cast but Dur, on the other hand, going to be throwing down that AA battery just, you know, to protect against those orcas. And that bombing run did do a fair amount of damage, which went, which might end up costing repair time, repair money, actually. Not so much repair time, but repair money and mass rocket troops are going to be moving out. And what is Green Zero going to be doing about it? He's going to be getting some rifleman squads of his own, and orcas are on the move. No engineer in there. The engineer was over here. Not able to get that airfield, so Green Zero staying sharp and Dur actually moving in with this kind of dual pronged infantry attack. As we do have an APC going to be leading the charge for this nice line of infantry right there, and the infantry on the top side, all these rifle and squads, will be able to do damage over time, but not a whole lot that he has to worry about. A couple of watchtowers could stop that right there, and actually, the uh, mines right there. For Green Zero, he needs to pull these Orcas back. They are absolutely going to get slaughtered. One, two, three Orcas. Three Orcas do, in fact, go down right there. Not able to do anything, but this Harvester was able to run over a few rocket squads. And Green Zero, on the other hand, is going to be moving in. Infantry Wars is what's happening. It's like it's some sort of custom map. And actually able to take out that... That, uh that uh, power plant is the word that I like to use. They're able to take out that power plant, calling in reinforcements, Dur is, and Green Zero on the other hand, going to be pushing forward and sitting his units inside of that Tiberium field is never good. He was able to take out one of the squads, which was actually one of the rocket squads instead of, and his rocket squads are actually shooting at the transports instead of at the actual units and these rifleman squads do not do very much damage but this rocket squad and that predator tank will eventually work down that building and the AP ammo upgrade is now there for grade zero we should have left one of these rifleman squads back to take care of that instead of sitting as units in that Tiberium field as you can see they're quite heavily damaged all of the ones in the full Tiberium field actually losing a couple of members of those squads to that dastardly Tiberium and this single predator tank is going to be left here as rifleman squads have for the most part been cleaned up by green zero green zero is now going to be moving in with his rocket squad rifleman army but we do have sniper teams out of dur which means he has an armory somewhere right over here and he can of course get that combat armor upgrade and some other uh, upgrades to make his infantry far more effective this predator tank will eventually go down won't even be able to get that harvester Especially if Green Zero builds something. Green Zero selling off both of those watchtowers, going to be sending the rocket squads out, the rifleman squads out of there, and Pitbull's just making strikes against the Tiberium Spike, which Tiberium Spikes for Dur, which is always good because if you can't control them, then you might as well take them out. Stop your opponent from getting that extra money per second. Extra 10 credits a second. But Pitbull's actually uh, going to take some damage. One of them does, in fact, go down there. And so they're actually able to do a little bit of damage despite losing those, 
despite losing those Tiberium Spikes, and this is just so many infantry, you don't normally see infantry wars like this. I mean, you kind of see something like this if they're playing like maybe Black Hand, but nor not normally in just GDI versus GDI, and Juggernauts are now out, which Juggernauts can of course be so damaging to those infantry, especially with the way that infantry stack a lot of times. Getting a, couple, getting a couple of shots off like there, and throwing down that laser fencing was a really good choice. Throwing down the watch towers behind the MCV is also a good choice, and using the power plant to block off attacks, and these juggernauts are now going to be able to get off lots and lots of shots on top of all of these rocket troopers. And of course, the rocket troopers will do the damage to the Mar, but they will do the damage to those juggernauts if they can get up close and personal, but when the Juggernauts are just shooting, sitting at the back, firing away, we are having Zone Trooper Engineer, Zone Trooper Combo, so no sniper teams or anything going to be there for that anti-infantry capabilities, as Zone Troopers do fairly well, but they're not the best anti-infantry unit of all time. Those sniper teams do do quite a bit more damage to certain infantry, but Zone Troopers, of course, do quite well by themselves anyways, and supporting it with another Zone Trooper squad and some extra rifleman squads that won't hurt either. Dual pumping infantry out of the dual barracks should be going for a lot of missile squads, because that's what he's going to need to do the damage to this Marv and the Juggernauts in the back, and actually getting the flank with the couple of rocket troopers, well, quite a few rocket troopers, one of them being fully veteran fully heroic status, and the sniper teams are going to be able to chew through these infantry, not going to be doing so much damage to the, uh, but going for dual engineer to the harvesters, but going dual engineer and inside of dual zone trooper inside of that Marv, and then more zone troopers here for support, and the rocket squads needs to be firing at the Marv and not at the zone troopers, that's one of those missiles completely missing their mark, and this Marv can take quite a bit of damage, but he really needs to be doing the damage to all of these units and getting once again that flank. Durr is able to get the flank with those rocket troopers and they will be shooting the rear armor of that Marv. And the Marv actually going to be microwing back a little bit and trying to, Green Zero is trying to minimize the amount of rear armor damage so that he takes as little as minus damage as possible and actually kind of getting blocked off by this refinery that Marv can't move back any further. And as you can see, those zone troopers do pretty well, but not as well as he would like, throwing down lots of watchtowers. Oh, and the Marv does go down. I thought that Marv was going to be able to escape there, disappearing under the tread of that juggernaut. And down here, we do have a rocket, or rocket troopers taking down that harvester. Harvester was only able to run over a couple of those rocket troopers. And Green Zero is now basically out of money. He needs to get this expansion fully loaded, up and running. He was able to save his MCV. And actually, he does have a sniper team down here, so he is able to use that bombardment support power. I'm not sure what he took out. Possibly the command post, which I don't see anywhere else. And actually, mass sell-off for Durr, but Durr, does he have the command post up here? No, which means no more anti-air base defenses until he rebuilds that command post. But up here is where the battle is going on, and these rifleman troopers are going to be able to do some damage. They need to turn around and take out that heroic missile squad to stop it from doing any more damage. And actually, if Green Zero just pulled back a little bit and just let these units sit in the Tiberium field, that wouldn't be too bad either. But this rifle squad actually, this missile squad actually doing quite a bit of damage and able to do quite a bit of damage to those rocket, or to these rifleman squads. Rifleman squads moving into that heavy air field themselves. Not the best choice as these harvesters will be able to clean them up in conjunction with the rifleman squads for Durr. And Durr actually sending his MCV around, or his harvester around the long way. Not going to get hit by those zone troopers quite yet. Throwing down the base defense, selling off all sorts of watchtowers, and this harvester is like, oh, hey. He realized he was in the bad section of town, the green zero section of town where he shoots Durr's units. But Durr remassing up some rocket squads, going to be here for defense. Going to do well versus any sort of orcas that green zero might have, which he did sell that off a little while ago after he lost those orcas. And then the hammerheads with at least one of them. Two, uh, how many rocket squads do we have in here? So it does look like... All four of them have rocket squads in there, and they will be able to do a fair amount of damage. And actually, wow, I don't think I've ever seen that in a multiplayer game, but we do have the Combat Support Airfield. will allow your orcas and other units to well, re give repairs, but then also allow them to get refueled and rebombed up for any more bombing ones that they may have. And just not something you see very often because it's not very useful in a lot of situations. And the Marv is going to be having... 
I'm actually not sure those kind of look like. I'm not sure what those cubs are, but we do have two engineers, and they are something. But Porka is going to be making a almost perfect strike on that Mar. He's going to be able to do a fair amount of damage, and Durr once again swinging around the top side, able to get that flank. And three AA batteries, maybe a little bit of overkill, and these juggernauts are actually doing quite a bit of damage to those Tiberium crystals. But the Pipples are going to be swinging in here, trying to do a little bit of damage to that Reclamator hub. And the rocket squads, mass rocket squads, are now moving in on the Marv and the mass hammerheads. One hammerhead does, in fact, go down those three. AA batteries may not be an overkill after all. And throwing down the refinery just for the front line, going to be able to use that uh, harvester to distract some damage, but also run over some of those infantry. Not able to do that quite yet, but those hammerheads going down in mass almost. And the Marv does pull back to the Reclamator Hub for some repairs and also to let those engineers do some of that self-repairing. And these AA batteries are almost down, which he needs to be able to focus on the AA batteries to bring the hammerheads in. But at the same time, he can't just let his whole of his units get killed. Always a difficult choice to make. And now Green Zero isn't in the worst of shape, but Durr has been able to get all of this Blue Tiberium from that field and harvest it all as well as harvest everything over here, but now Green Zero will have free reign to collect this Tiberium with his Marv, if he so chooses. Single lone power plant up there, and then lots of tech down here, which was completely undefended, and actually if Durr was able to successfully attack there, he could do a severe damage to Green Zero. He needs to press forward with these hammerheads, especially since there's no AA defenses down here. And he could, the MCV is actually on the move, taking quite a bit of damage there. So he could, in fact, do even more damage and take out this command post, which if he takes out the command post, then there's no AA batteries. Although I don't think there's very much build radius here anyways, as even the tech center does get sold off, and will the AA command post get sold off as well? No, he's looking to save that as long as he can. I'm guessing he's trying to get out some AA batteries, but it does not look like he's going to be able to do it as the command post will go down. Getting sold off at the last second there, so actually getting 100 credits back, but he wasted 500 credits on that laser fencing, which, you know, offsets that that rebate a little bit. And just using his Marv, he's like, hey, I need some extra cash, I need to fast, just use my Marv, because why not, especially in this situation, and still, so no railguns, and no mammoth tanks, no tier 3, 4, uh, Durr, at least so far, selling off one of those war factories, can't quite afford to produce off of it, and sending his MCV off to the front lines and possibly to try and retake this expansion, but spoiler alert, there's not a lot of money there, however, Green Zero needs to retake this, there is actually quite a bit of Tiberium there, he could fund quite a few more units out of this and get, you know, maybe a couple more Juggernauts, something like that, out of this Green Tiberium field. And actually, Green Zero not going to be in too awful shape since he is still harvesting. Oh, no, never mind. These hammerheads are going to be able to do a little bit of damage to Green Zero's units and also to Green Zero's harvesters. But other than that, harvesting, or harvesting, harvesting, but harvesting Tiberium is going pretty well for Tiberium for Green Zero. If I could talk, it would be a little bit better. But we do have three harvesters for Green Zero and that one refinery. Not too bad of a ratio. In this late of the game, it's kind of, you know, always difficult because this Tiberium growth dries up. You don't need as many harvesters, usually. But in this situation, there's quite a few for Green Zero, and he needs to remove all of his forces. These predator tanks will be able to just roll over everything, and they are going to be going for those harvesters, able to take down two at least, as these two are very low on HP. I can't imagine that they won't get taken out. One does go down right there, and this other one actually able to escape just barely. And the Predator tank stacking a little bit and taking that splash damage right there. But, Green Zero, not in terrible shape. But, we need we do need to note that Durr isn't in awful shape either. He's still got a shot at winning this game, even though the tech advantage does go to Green Zero. Especially when you've got stuff like your Hammerheads flying around the map, able to do quite a bit of damage. But, Slingshots are what Green Zero needs. And those Hammerheads, without the Ceramic, without the Zocom Ceramic Armor upgrade, they do go down quite a quite more quite a bit quicker than the ceramic armor upgraded hammerheads, but they can still tank a fair amount of damage. And actually, not selling off his reclamator hub. I thought I saw that, but Green Zero needs to take out as many harvesters as he can while he can. Well, not as many harvesters as it is always better to go for those 
Predator tanks and actually probably selling off that MCV. Possibly he lost it to the Juggernauts. I'm not sure, but selling off this entire expansion down here, getting those cash back rebates in the form of rifle and squads in addition to that money. And actually... Okay, so we actually do have composite armor. So equal upgrades for both of these players. They have that AP ammo and that composite armor upgrade, which means they are equally matched in their rifleman squads, which means it will come down to the micro, but not necessarily the micro of the rifleman squads. Micro of those predator tanks versus that Marv, and the Marv going to be doing a little bit of more Tiberium harvesting because he's like, eh, you know, I, I like the peaceful life. I don't really like this shooting. I mean, it's all right, but Tiberium harvesting is where his mind is really at and where his heart is is really at as predator tanks for Durr going to be moving in and this may be the final battle of this game as Durr is going to be moving in green zero is going to have to pump up his defenses where are his juggernauts they're down here they're like hey let's go check out this expansion do we actually have dual mcv oh yes we do he did not lose it he was setting up down there but predator tanks moving in able to do a little bit of damage to the two power plants now you're able to do enough damage to the Harvesters, as the Harvesters are still both alive, and Rifleman Squad's going to be retreating, and Green Zero going to try and dig in. Will he get it? No! All of them don't go down, but the Juggernauts are going to be down here. Slingshots are going to be used for support, but slingshot needs the Slingshots needs to need to get over here so that they can run over the infantry as they come out. And actually, perfect Juggernaut shots able to take that down in one go, and the Hammerhead is here, which... Two out of the three AA batteries did get sold off, and this is the weakest of them, which means, you know, he got he got the most money back, but at the same time, that one will go down the quickest, throwing down a power plant just to mess with the pounding of these Predator tanks. A little bit more in the Predator tanks. Are they going to get run over by the Marv? No, they are going to micro back and back out of the path of the Marv, and down here, does look like the MCB either got sold off or went down in Green Zero, getting some extra money while fighting the while fighting Durr with his Marv, and Durr doing the smart thing, getting around with his Predator tanks, able to get the flank, but the Marv is going to be doing some damage and actually running over? No, I'm not actually sure if he got run up, if he got crushed, or if he just got shot up, but the Marv is now with that single veteran C, that uh, circuit Marv right there, and trying to get around to the real side armor Durr is, which is the best choice, and dropping down the reinforcements aren't going to be able to do a whole lot as they're right next to those foxholes, but they will be able to do some damage and getting around to the rear armor needs to make sure that he micros back. Good job on Durr, able to micro back in the stacking of those Predator tanks being kind of the death of the Predator tanks right there as the Rifleman squads inside of there able to do a little bit of damage. And the engineers absolutely saving the Marv in this situation. And look at that, Rifleman squads, you don't see them doing that very often, but there is four Rifleman squads firing at that Predator tank, able to take it down almost single-handedly. They're actually, uh, got one and two chevrons there and pumping out more harvesters to try and saturate his economy green zero is not in too bad of shape still dur is not in too great of shape either though neither of these players are in great shape but dur and green zero both aren't in horrible shape and actually this predator tank may get a promotion nope not quite not able to get a promotion for running over a couple of rifleman squads but he was able to save himself, and now he will not be moving back to full repairs, as I thought he might. But a sniper team actually going to be over here making the spot for the Juggernauts, and enough to take down the command post, which means back down to Tier 1 for this War Factory, because it's not likely that he was going to be throwing down too many anti-air defenses, as that would be silly. But still, with these slingshots, Green Zero not wanting to give up any sort of, you know, air defense as he does decide to sell off that a8 battery in favor of those uh, you know of the slingshots which of course very well versus most air units actually basically all gdi air units as firehawks don't do all that much damage to units they're more of a base killing unit but again with the long range bombardment very useful in this matchup as it does allow those juggernauts to bombard from that extremely long range and the Sniper team not going to get run over or anything actually able to completely clean up that expansion once again as that was a hit and run expansion and the predator tank you ran over a couple of riflemen squad but you didn't have enough to finish off this refinery or to do enough damage to that juggernaut but the juggernauts actually ooh, we might be able to get the hit off on 
that harvester as well, which means one more refinery for Green Zero, which it is a damaged refinery. While on the other hand, two refineries for our other player, Durr, and actually Durr, nope, that's not his MCV, his sneaky MCV is down here. Good choice expanding here, of course, Green Zero should re-expand here, there's so much money here, almost to the uh, starting field capacity, and he does have his MCV actually moving out right now, so take note, Green Zero heard me from the future and was like, hey, I should expand there, while doing the other right thing, Durr is going to be expanding to the bottom field, which is of course a smart move for him, and actually not able to focus down the shatter there, he gets it right there, taking some extra damage from the rocket squads, but able to do quite a bit of damage themselves, and it does look like Green Zero is going to be moving out with his self-repairing Amarv, and actually able to do substantial amounts of damage to that one to that one hammerhead, and now he's going to be like, hey, I just need to rebuild in the south, make Green Zero psych seek me out, and maybe I can pull off the win, maybe we can see some crazy engineer stuff, and more with the long-range bombardment, where are they going over here through the, huh, an interesting choice, I guess he wanted to go for, you know, the rifleman squad kills, not give away the position of his snipers, I guess. But anyways, going on some harvester hunting, Green Zero is going to be moving down to the southern base, and I do not believe he has scouted anything down here. But, nope, we do have harvesters moving in from all sides of the map, and Green Zero actually may lose his pawn yard. Nope, not quite going to lose it, but his harvester is up and out, and it's going to take quite a bit of damage from this rifleman squad in the foxhole, which is a heroic rifleman squad, something you don't see necessarily all that often. In this game, you have seen quite a few heroic units. No heroic units here, although we might see a heroic Marv, which would be pretty sweet. And Durr just, he's choosing his battles. He's, you know, only doing what he can, and he's not sticking around any one location too long because that'll green, give Green Zero a chance to throw down some anti-air defenses and do some damage to the Hammerheads and going after the uh, weakened Harvesters just like he should. And actually going to go going down for the Reclamator of No, not quite. And that AA battery is now up and going to be unloading its rounds into those hammerheads. And Green Zero actually may stop to take out this Tigarian Spike, which wouldn't be too bad of a choice as every little bit helps. And actually Green Zero out of power, so now Durr has free reign over this expansion. Never mind as Green Zero powered down this AA battery over here. Selling off the watchtower over here and now he is free to harvest all of this wonderful delicious Tiberium. While Durr on the other hand is like, hey! You set up in your main base, I'll set up at your expansion. We're both happy this way, and massing out infantry is probably the only real viable option, but spoiler alert, Green Zero will be able to spot it with this sniper team, and he will be able to call down those shots, which he might want to take down the armory, as we do have possibly EMP grenades, which will be very good. Yes, EMP grenades are the upgrade of choice for Durr. That is what he's going to be getting, which will, of course, be very good at dealing with that Marv, but the slingshots are going to be very good at dealing with these hammerheads and going not for the armory but going for the refinery instead which is of course never a bad choice in basically any stage of the game green zero is going to get a little bit of extra cash here he might even micro his harvester around to collect all of that tiberium going to be able to pick up a couple hundred dollars there worth of tiberium probably about 500 credits worth of tiberium just in that one couple of seconds that one couple of seconds just in those couple of seconds and now he's going to be moving in with his damaged smattered army but he's reset up over here throwing down the scan over here just to see what's going on and where is that sniper team it is way up here so the sniper team are retreating a little bit not wanting to give away their position and the grenadiers are out which of these grenadiers they do now have that emp grenade or those EMP grenades, as I should say, they don't just have one. But dual barracks spread out quite a bit for the because of this MCV was on the move. But we do have the EMP grenades able to lock down that shatterer so that they can do some damage to it. They need to be locking down either these slingshots or this mar because of those are kind of the important units here. And I'm still not able to kill that shatter. The shatterer will get one shot off. Wasn't able to do anything with that one single shot. But Green Zero is, you know, still at the tech advantage, but the sheer army size advantage and also the aircraft advantage goes to Durr, so Durr definitely not out of this game yet. This game has been quite long, quite exciting though, and we do have the sniper team is possibly dead. Yeah, the sniper team died, gave their life. Nope, they're right there in the middle of the screen, almost literally. That sniper team is going to be running everywhere. 
with their little Panama hats on their heads, going to be stealthed, just moving around, and then they're going to be like, hey, Juggernauts, you should totally take out that, like, command post so that he can't build any sort of aircraft or anything like Grenadier Squads, which is very, very annoying, especially when those Grenadier Squads have the MP grenades, which could be the bane of a Marv. We have seen EMP grenades be used quite effectively by a number of different players on those epic units because why not absolutely why not and actually i'm going to have to end this cast right here because i have almost no space left on my hard drive and we're back now i just had to go and literally clear up some space on my hard drive because i had four gigs free and actually durant was able to grab green zero spike but green zero going to be doing quite a bit of damage to this other refinery after taking out that refinery and command post this sniper team very being very very useful on all sides of the map but <laughs> actually going to be moving out with his giant infantry force and redeploying his mcv with that harvester and refinery over here to do some extra harvesting but now all of the tiberium spikes have been taken out dur is going to be re-expanding like i said and moving out with his big old infantry army hopefully to do some damage but green zero ap sears are of course a great choice and they're actually not terrible anti-air they're not the best anti-air but they're not bad and so we do have mass apcs to go with the juggernauts to go with the slingshots to go with the marv and actually dual pumping apcs out of the war factory and reclamator hub and actually maybe some rifleman squads as well yes rifleman squads going to be heading out of green zero to deal with this mass infantry army and actually going to be setting up some foxholes which will be good if if uh, green zero chooses to engage they of course won't benefit Dur at all if he is forced to engage on Green Zero's turfs, but that is not going to be happening because Green Zero will be able to smash that army if if, uh, if uh, Dur engages, but Dur needs to regroup his army. He actually might be able to hold back with these units a little bit, regroup them as best they can, wait for this army to engage, and then come in and able to and crush it from behind, do that damage to that rear armor. He probably should have uh, dug in a couple of more units, but digging in a couple of that with just one. Oh, and actually able to EMP three of those APCs, which is quite annoying. These APCs need to get EMP'd, and will they? No, not quite getting EMP'd up here. APC is actually able to do quite a bit of damage to these infantry and the rest of the infantry getting cut off by that Marv with those rifleman squads and APC is actually able to do quite a bit of damage. Green Zero didn't take nearly as much damage as I thought he would. Maybe a couple of extra foxholes wouldn't have hurt, but they did get taken out quite quickly by the mass APC and this may be it for our friend Dur. Dur just now going to be massing out those predator tanks, but once again, where is that sneaky sniper team I was trying to find them on the map but they are hiding somewhere that sneaky sniper team is right there going to be escaping actually half dead so taking some damage there but going to be repairing up that refinery before it takes too much damage I don't think it matters because green zero is going to be moving in here and mo moving down with his harvesters he's like hey you're gonna destroy that base okay I'll just go redeploy over somewhere else and Green Zero needs to actually throw down another refinery over here. Maybe sell off one of these as this field is now fully harvested. Transfer three of these, three or four of these harvesters over here and start harvesting that Tiberium. Oh. And once again, just, you know, kind of almost like cat and mouse game. Just wild goose chases all over the place. As you can see, actually garrisoning in a couple of building, couple of units, and I actually thought both of these Tiberium spikes got taken out, but has been able to hold on to this one for the entire game and these APCs will shred that single building but Durr may have to make his final stand here as the APCs do move quite quickly and the mines actually doing a little bit of damage not very much damage to Durr's units but Green Zero actually is going to get the flank on the APC on the MCV with his APCs and so many harvesters actually quite a few harvesters here six four total and a couple of rocket squads are going to get cut off and eliminated by that bad micro from Durr. He wasn't paying attention, so they just got killed without any shots being fired. But Durr, probably the worst place for me to have ended the game, for the game to end. But that's what happened. So Durr has been defeated after quite a long 32-minute game. Almost 33 minutes right there. And look at that resource graph. Durr actually able to come out way ahead of Green Zero. So as you can see, well, okay, 15,000 credits ahead for Durr. And no, deselect all of those. 
but look at that unit kill to death ratio for green zero the mass infantry didn't quite work which actually surprisingly right missile squad versus rifle squads were the favorite units out of the both of these players but look at that unit killed ratio for green zero of course stomping dur in that area but dur was still able to play very strongly and almost came out head a couple of times in that game and was both of these players were pretty evenly matched and quite a good game out of both of these players but i have to go because nearly had a hard drive space once again i wasn't able to clear up very much but the cyber signing out